was Nunc Dimittis, Song of Simeon. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this time of evening prayer for Thursday, the 5th of January. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. When God restores our fortune, our dreams will come true. We will sing glory to our God. We will rejoice in our Saviour's birth. Our mouths shall be filled with laughter. Joy shall chime from our lips. God has made it clear. Those who serve are God's children. Then we will proclaim, look what the Lord has done. So others will know beyond any doubt how the Holy One has blessed us with hope. We wept. Now we will cheer joy, joy. We were lost. Now we will run home laughing. For God has picked us up where we fell. God has kept the promises made so long ago. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now we read from Psalm 62. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall or a tottering fence? Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehoods. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honour. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. The power belongs to God. The steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. For you repay to all according to their work. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And now for this last but one evening, we turn again to sharing the Christmas story, which is written by Sally Welch. And BRF has very kindly given us permission, as has Sally, to use this book as part of our Advent thoughts and reflections over this period of Advent. And I don't know about you, but I found this really useful. There's been some really great reflections that have spoken to me, and tonight's is no different. So let's begin with what Sally has to share with us tonight. The reading is taken from Luke 2, 36 to 38. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward 
to the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then Sally writes. In my pilgrim journeys, I have had the privilege of walking alongside many different people of all ages and backgrounds. One of the most interesting groups is comprised of those who have recently retired. Many of these are carrying out a promise made to themselves over many years that they, that they would celebrate the end of their period of full-time paid employment by making a significant journey. Others have only taken on board the idea of a pilgrimage in the few months preceding their retirement, and a few have set off on the spur of a moment with little planning, simply heading out towards a distant destination. Conversations with these fellow pilgrims have been interesting, surprising, and occasionally very moving. Many walkers embrace the time for reflection, giving themselves space to look back over everything that they have been and done and to give thanks for it. Some are looking forward to the next stage of their lives, using the rhythm of walking as a background for thinking about their priorities and goals for the future. They have shared the experience and wisdom of years as well as the hopes for the years ahead. And I have been the richer for it. The story of Anna is one of wisdom and hope. There is always a danger of disregarding the contribution that those who are no longer in financially rewarding work can bring to society as a whole. And it is wonderful to read how Anna's faithfulness and prayer is rewarded by her glimpse of the Messiah. Her willingness to share her experience is also documented. She speaks about Jesus as one who will be instrumental in the redemption of Jerusalem. Anna has not stopped looking forward and she has not ceased to live in hope. Her story honours her in its inclusion in the narration of Jesus's birth. How appropriate, therefore, that the work of BRF in supporting the elderly should be called Anna Chaplaincy in her honour. Anna Chaplin's work within communities to accompany older people at this age and stage of their lives. Complementing existing ministry, it offers spiritual care by helping people reflect on their life's journey, both the joys and the sorrows and where appropriate, enabling the healing of memories and the celebration of life experiences to foster more hope and resilience. It recognises the contribution older people can make to society, but also speaks out in their support, championing their needs and acting on their behalf within a wider context. Part of a wider team resourced and licensed by BRF, Anna Chaplin's make a real difference in the communities in which they work, a brave and exciting venture. Each of us, whatever our age and ability, can contribute to the well-being of society, not just in active ways, but like Anna herself, by being a model of prayer and faithfulness. We can look to the future with hope, articulating our vision for a better world, enthusing and supporting others in their work as the body of Christ carries out God's worth in, on earth. She asks an important question at the end and Sally asks, are the needs of contributions of older people recognised in your community and how could that be improved? Made me think of my community in my church and my community of people that live outside the church. We, like many, 
are a very elderly congregation. But those people in our church, and not just my church, but all over, have such a lot to give. They may not have the energy of young people now, but they have prayer. They have faithfulness. They have thankfulness. And that can bring about so much to a community in a church or out. And that is real mission, taking those prayers, that love and that faithfulness out into the communities where we live and where we worship. I read the reading um, earlier on today, but I read back a little bit about Simeon. And I read that Simeon and Anna teach us to keep praying. They teach us to have faith that God's timing is not our timing. And they teach us to have trust, even if God's promise is taking a little longer than we'd like. Amen. The song that I've chosen to share with you this evening is called Simeon's Song, but it reflects on what Anna has taught us too.
just love those words. I hope you did too. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lover of justice, your flex, your righteousness, and scatter evil to the wind. You plant hope in our hearts and reap a bumper crop. You wipe away the tears from our eyes and anoint us with joy's oil. Servant of God, you bandage our souls as you take our wounds upon yourself. You set us free from sin by being bound to the cross. You console the grieving by carrying death to its resting place. Spirit of passion, when sin strips us of life, clothe us in salvation's finery. When we are deafened by the peddlers of fear, whisper the good news to us. When we shiver in death's winter, wrap us in the shawl of hope. God in community, holy in one, anoint us with your grace, we pray. Amen. And now, as this praying community, we come to our Synod evening prayers, our cycle of prayer for this Synod. And we pray especially tonight for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Northamptonshire. There are many who need prayer, many known to us and many unknown to us. There are many who need prayer, many who are in the news, many who are struggling, many who are sad, many who are suffering. There are many who need prayer. There are many in our own communities who we don't know, but who need our prayer. And so tonight, before we bring before God the people who have asked us for prayer, let's have a few minutes of silence to bring those that we know, those that we don't know, and our own communities before God in prayer. Father God, we ask you to be with all those on our hearts. We ask that this Christmas they may have seen the light and that now going into 2023, they carry the light with them. And we pray also that we may be filled with your light and with your Holy Spirit, that we can take you into our communities we can take you through prayer to those we know and to those we don't know, but to all those who you know so very well. In your name we pray. Amen. And now we come to those who have asked us for prayer. And we pray for the Reverend Jenny Mills, who is now home from hospital but is still awaiting some treatment. We pray with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter, who is now home from hospital. We pray for the Reverend Derek Hopkins at home and facing health challenges. We pray for the Reverend Solomon and Paulina Ari Brown for Paulina's father, Kwaku. And we pray with the Reverend Samuel and Evelyn Salungwe for Evelyn's father, Labson. We pray for the Reverend Martin Ferris as he awaits hospital tests and he looks for a way forward. We pray for the Reverend Stanley Crane in his continued recovery from surgery. And we pray for the Reverend Michael Forster and Jean Forster, and for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. 
we continue to pray for Father Andy, Moynier's parish priest. And we pray with Liz for her 12 year old great nephew Ryan and for her daughter Emma and Emma's son Leon. And we pray with Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care of her, especially as they prepare for her review on the 13th of January. We continue to pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care for him. We pray with my husband, Paul, for his mum, Pat, and with me for my dad, Brian. And we pray for all of those. We have been praying for people for whom this is not the most wonderful time of the year. But we could pray tonight for those for whom this new year has not been the best start. And maybe there are things in this year that they're not looking forward to. But we pray that each person may look at today as a gift. Today is what we live for. And so even if their year is not quite the beginning that they hoped it would be, we pray that things will get better for them. We pray for all those grieving the passing of loved ones, praying especially at this time for those who grieve for Angus Nalungwe, especially the Reverend Samuel Salungwe and family. For those who grieve for Beryl Poucher, especially Neil, the Reverend Gillian Poucher and Alice. For those who grieve for Trevor Smith, especially the Reverend Amanda Linney, his daughter and the family. We pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Doug Watson and for those who grieve for Bridget Mwara, especially the Reverend George Mwara and family. Father God, each name that we mention night after night, we give to you. Each family that belong to these people, we give to you. Each person that comes night after night to pray, we give to you. And we thank you, Father God, for all that you give to us. In your name we pray. Amen. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I'm pretty sure the song I'm going to share with you now is one that I've shared over this time of Advent. It's by Graham Kendrick and called Thorns in the Straw. And it talks about Jesus coming as a baby and going through his life. We celebrate the birth of this great king, of this babe, of this Messiah, of this boy and of this man. But we don't leave him in the manger. We take him with us each and every day. Let's listen to Thorns in the Straw. Thank you. 
The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen and good night. <laughs>